The era of giant flying boats promising opulent air travel peaked in the mid 20th century. Initially, they thrived due to their water landing versatility and luxury amenities like lounges and restaurants. However, evolving aviation trends led to their decline. Economic considerations added weight, maintenance challenges, and the rise of land based airliners led major airlines to abandon giant flying boats by 1950s. Despite pioneering efforts and audacious concepts, the era of giant flying boats ultimately succumbed to the changing landscape of air travel. The world's first jet airliner in a massive flying boat debuted in 1952 as two unique aircrafts in aviation history. A pioneering enterprise, the flying boat, thought it provided a greater and more opulent flying experience, replete with lounges, restaurants, and private rooms. The world watched with bated breath as flying boats rose to become unrivaled sky giants. During the 1930s, aviation pioneered two types of aircraft, land planes and sea planes. For takeoff and landing, land planes required a traditional runway, but sea planes could smoothly fall into the water's surface. This disparity was particularly pronounced in the 1930s when many cities lacked appropriate airports and runways were frequently crewed. The Earth's surface, on the other hand, was plentiful with bodies of water, providing flying boats with unequaled ability to land and take off from nearly anywhere with an open expanse of water, providing them with a versatility that land planes just couldn't match. The German Dornier DOX flying boat made its trans-Atlantic journey to the Hudson River in New York, marking an important milestone in commercial aviation's history. The Dornier DOX, unveiled in 1929, was a pioneering flying boat that held paramount significance in the history of luxury travel. This colossal aircraft, born during an era when the land plane's development was hampered by a lack of suitable runways, introduced opulent amenities like lounges, restaurants, and private suites. Its role in shaping the perception of flying boats as the future of long-range air travel marked a pivotal chapter in the rapid evolution of commercial aviation. However, despite its grandeur and allure, the Dornier DOX ultimately faced challenges that led to its ultimate demise in the realm of commercial aviation. Flying boats grew bigger, heavier, and more competent, allowing them to reach distant parts of the planet that standard planes couldn't. As a result, they became the favored form of transportation for the people who could afford luxury, providing comfort and protection. Flying boats were the future of long-distance air travel as they evolved. In 1943, a British aircraft company began developing the next generation of flying boats, imagining a massive aircraft that would change the face of air transport. However, owing to the worldwide turbulence of the World War II, the development of new airliners were temporarily halted after the war, a British company called Saunders Row created a prototype and named it the Princess, the world's largest and most advanced flying boat airliner. For its 100 lucky occupants, this magnificent two-level cabin had lounges, restaurant, sleeping suites, and a promenade. The Princess's unusual design helped cut drag and introduce some of the first turboprop engines on a commercial airliner. The intricate design of the Princess allowed it to attain speeds of over 600 km per hour and soar up to 39,000 feet and travel over 9,000 km, more than twice the capability of previous flying boats. The Princess by Saunders Row launched a new age in flying boats, just in time for the 1950s air travel boom. Saunders Row, a business dedicated to developing the world's first flying boat combat jet, was passionate about flying boats. However, after the princess's maiden flight in 1952, when it got attention at the Fanborough Air Show, the industry's excitement for the flying boats waned. The war had resulted in the development of land-based bombers as well as the building of a slew of new airports with large concrete runways. Many airports were converted to civilian use after the war, rendering flying boats less significant in the developing aviation scene. As a result, 
Saunders Rowe had difficulties in adjusting to the realities of post-war air travel, emphasizing the requirement of a more suitable and efficient aviation business. Due to economic reasons, major airlines globally phased out flying boats in favor of land-based airliners in 1950s. Flying boats required strengthened fuselages for water landing, which added weight and decreased aerodynamic performance. They also caused cabin pressurization issues, necessitated additional pilot training, and imposed high maintenance and requirement owing to corrosive seawater exposure. These issues made flying boats less financially viable for airlines. Despite these obstacles, Saunders Row remained dedicated to the benefits of flying boats, emphasizing on their size, safety, and low infrastructure needs. They launched a marketing campaign saying that the flying boats could rival land-based aircraft performance and that the princess would usher in a new era of flying boat air travel. Saunders Row faced desperation as they campaigned against the move away from the flying boats, arguing it was motivated by incorrect assumptions or bias against the flying boats. However, large airlines such as the BOAC showed little interest in them. Instead, they purchased a fleet of D. Havilland Comets, the first jet-powered airliners in the world. The flying boat period was ended by the 1954 and Saunders Row had not sold a single plane. After two years of looking for a buyer, the business decided to put the Princess and two completed airframes in long-term storage. Despite this, Saunders Row's engineers were granted the opportunity to design the ultimate flying boat, capping off a chapter in aviation history. Engineers in Saunders Row designed a massive flying boat carrying off up to a thousand passengers in 1956, hoping to compete with Grunt airliners and ocean liners. The concept was to build an aerial ocean liner the length of a football pitch with five decks and a crew of 47. Saunders Row planned to integrate 24 jet engines onto the aircraft's massive wings to lift the 1.5 million pound behemoth into the sky. The plane would have plenty of room within the wings for engineers to maintain and run around while in flight, a tribute to the era's lofty ambitions. The concept sought to move a large number of people throughout the world in an effective manner. Saunders Row Princess flying boat was a great design concept, but it was only a vision. The company's attention had switched to other growing sectors by the 1960s and Saunders Row subsequently merged with another British aircraft company. The Princess flying boats were kept in a storage for more than a decade, awaiting different suggestions such as conversion into freight planes, troop transports and nuclear-powered aircraft. By 1967, the airframes had corroded and the planes were dismantled and scrapped. The Princess flying boats embodied both futuristic and antique design concepts, representing the majesty and refinement of the era. In the end, the grand era of giant flying boats, with their promise of opulent air travel, succumbed to their evolving landscape of aviation. The allure of lounges, restaurants, and private suites in these magnificent machines couldn't withstand economic realities, added weight and maintenance challenges. As major airlines transitioned to land-based airliners, the giant flying boats, once the sky's unrivaled giants, faded into history. Despite their decline, the audacity and innovation of the flying boats era left an indeniable mark on the aviation history. Their opulence and pioneering spirit remain a testament to an era when the skies knew no limits. Thank you for watching my video. If you like it, do subscribe to this channel.